Hi, this is Pastor Dan Schultz, Zion Lutheran Hopkins, Minnesota. Always glad to be with you, to be able to share with you a few thoughts uh, during this time of quarantine, during the COVID pandemic. Uh, it's been very interesting to learn how to do these videos, to um, hear back from you all about uh, how you're enjoying them and how they're helpful to you, uh, encouraging to you. Hopefully you're visiting our website often, visiting our YouTube channel often, our Facebook page, um, all sorts of resources out there. And uh, last night I actually uh, sent out an email blast to a lot of you um, asking for your input on uh, a Bible study topic idea that we could do online. Um, not sure exactly the format, it kind of depends on how many people uh, want to do a Bible study, whether it would be a pre-recorded or whether it would be interactive on Zoom or uh, something else, but uh, please uh, email uh, communications at zionhopkins.org is where I would like those emails to go. So if you reply to that email, uh, that's where it will go. And then I'll be able to see what kind of ideas I have. That neighbor dog, he's just can always barking when I want to record, but that's okay. Today I want to spend some time um, thinking about prayer. Uh, this week, this day, uh, our nation is uh, is looking at prayer and uh, the power of prayer and being directly involved in uh, praying to our God, our Father above, who knows the situation that we're in, who knows each and every one of us uh, so uniquely and so individually. But he also, even knowing all that, he also has asked us to pray. Uh, there's a powerful connection, a two-way connection. Some people would say it's only one way, Pastor Dan, but God has promised that there really is a two-way connection. Uh, there's talking to him and then there's receiving from him. Uh, the answer may not always be in the time frame that we want. It may not always be the answer that we want, but we know that our God has promised to hear us. So today I wanna, I wanna look at a resource and I'm gonna share this. I will put a link to it uh, in the description uh, on the YouTube video itself if you wanna download it for yourself. Uh, I'm gonna go through and uh, just the different things that we can be praying for, uh, the different topics of conversation. So let me jump to it so I can see it as well. And I'm gonna move it around a little bit and make it a little bigger. So all sorts of different uh, all sorts of different things that we can be praying for. Uh, we pray for our church. First Kings chapter eight, nine to or ten to eleven says, "Jesus, we pray that your church would be saturated with your glory." I'm going to go down here to the box text. Churches, we would pray that churches would be houses of prayer, overflowing with prayer throughout the weekly services and in the lives of every believer. That all pastors, that's me would be deeply rooted in the word of God and would preach the word of God with love and courage to guide and shepherd their flock. That pastors' marriages and families would be strengthened, appreciated, and supported, not criticized and exhausted. That every believer would understand that they have been called to pray, love, and share the gospel as laborers in the mission field of the places they live, work, learn, worship, and play. I love all these things, praying for our church. That should be one thing that we uh, constantly and consistently pray for. And then we pray uh, about government. Psalm 102, 15 talks about this. And I'm again, I'm going to go down here to the box text. You may not be able to see my, my cursor, so I'll highlight it. So this is what I'm going to talk about. We would pray that all elected officials would serve in God's will with humility and justice, that every person would know the love and message of Jesus and follow him as their Lord. And we pray that the light will shine into every government office and meeting and all plans, deeds, decisions, strategies, and schemes will be exalted or exposed according to the word and will of God. So this, of course, talking about uh, our layers of government, our national level, state level, local community level, and uh, that every American would be God-fearing and glorifying, living worthy of the motto, in God we trust. So constantly and consistently pray for our government. Next, we pray about family. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 through 19 talks about praying for family. 
We would pray that husbands and wives would love and respect one another with faithfulness and an ever-growing devotion for one another and for God. That families would pray, read, and study the Bible, worship, and serve together, building one another up in faith, love, hope, and truth. That children would grow up in safe and supportive homes filled with the love and principles of Jesus, and that they will respect and love their parents. That God would heal the wounds of the abandoned and and abused. That all people would know that they are loved. May every person live in the abundant life and divine destiny authored and perfected by Jesus. Such an important one uh, as uh, our family values and our families are under attack even more than they have been in the past. We want to make sure we're praying for families, God-fearing families. We continue to pray and we pray about education. We pray for education. Again, I'll highlight it so we can see it that all campuses will be a safe place to learn, that all curriculum taught in every classroom will be true and beneficial to the spiritual as well as the intellectual growth of the students. I'll speak to that for just a moment. Uh, as my kids are working on their you know, science and biology and, uh, and courses like that, so often you know, we see the, the, the devil has gotten in the way of learning God-fearing, biblical-based uh, truths and we see evolution and Darwinism and the Big Bang Theory and, you know, a lot of things that are purported as truth when uh, we know as Christians the truth. Uh, could God use some of those things, some of those processes uh, to bring about his creation? Certainly, certainly. But we know that there is a, a limit on what we can trust from non-biblical sources when it comes to the science of who we are, where we came from, and where the earth around us originated from. It wasn't a happy accident. It wasn't just nature over nurture. It wasn't millions and millions of years of evolution to do the things that God did in seven days. So we continue to pray that all the curriculums that are taught uh, are taken, uh, taken to heart with a Christian perspective in mind. And we pray that there will be at least one Christian club on every campus for prayer. So this is talking about both high school and college. So there are prayer groups uh, at the St. Louis High School. They're allowed to gather and uh, be able to pray. I know about those. And of course, we know campus crusades and things like that around our country. And in fact, the world are wonderful opportunities for people to learn uh, truths about God and be able to connect with other Christian men and women. And so we ask that uh, Bible study and fellowship is made available and that those things would strengthen student believers and glorify God on campus. And that the decision makers, administration and educators would be supported and make sound decisions that glorify God and serve our students in every area of education. It's so important that as we're bringing up young Christian men and women, uh, that they are able to perceive truth from falsehood, uh, be able to understand biblical-based truths versus truths that are just kind of thrown out there to uh, confuse and uh, intercept people from the will of God, uh, which God wants from each and every one of us. He wants that connection. He wants us to be continually with him, studying with him, learning with him. And uh, so a lot of the things that uh, we have out there is truth today. Uh, it's just it's just not the same. And of course, that's been happening uh, since the Garden of Eden. There's been truths out there that are, go against the will of God. Uh, in this pandemic time, we, we pray for all the businesses out there. A lot of struggles, a lot of strife, a lot of uh, worry uh, about where we're going, about what's going to happen. Um, I invite you to tune in on Sunday. I'm preaching a, a message uh, with a focus on the hope that we have uh, during this struggle, during this time, where our focus should be. Of course, we know it should be on Jesus. That's the final answer. But we pray for businesses. We pray that business owners and management would lead their employees with godly practices and equity, and that every worker would know that they have value and influence, and therefore will work with excellence as working unto God. 
that every workplace from the school, military, home, office, store, and more will be filled with those who are praying and living out their faith in Jesus with love, excellence, and respect, and that believers would know that their work is a part of their worship of God. So even right now, if you're not working, if you're at home, or even if you're working from home and it's different, or whether you've been laid off or furloughed or um, you know, given some time off, and if you're collecting unemployment, that's wonderful. If you're able to continue successfully uh, economically, that's wonderful. But if you're not, there's, there's resources out there. There's help out there. And in fact, there's uh, people uh, at Zion, the friends and family of Zion, that have offered help. So don't worry. Um, don't worry. Uh, you can come to the church. There's resources. Uh, just contact me. Uh, there's resources from government, state officials, um, organizations. Uh, there's a lot of things out there. Uh, so as you have that stress and that worry about financial stability, uh, there is there is things that uh, people in the Zion friends and family uh, are willing and able to help you with. So please let us know if we can be that kind of help. Next, we move on to the military. And I'm going to highlight this if I can get it. There we go. We ask that all of our service members would be well prepared and trained spiritually as well as physically, mentally, and emotionally. And I think we could also throw in here all of our frontline workers, the fire departments, uh, the Air National Guard. We had to fly over yesterday. It was wonderful to see. They flew over the hospitals in support of the healthcare workers and frontline workers. Um, and it was just beautiful to be able to see that C-130 and two F-16s uh, basically fly right over my house. We were at a park nearby, so we had a good, a good view of them as they circled Methodist Hospital and then headed up to Robbinsdale and North Memorial. And, uh, it was it was really neat to see uh, their support of the frontline workers. So whether they're they're active right now in the military, whether they're part of the National Guard, uh, Air National Guard, um, you know, reserves whoever it is, um, they can be called up in an instant when a need arises and we ask for them to be strong in their faith. We ask for their marriages, finances, and their children would be strong spiritually, educationally, socially, and emotionally, that the chain of command would be filled with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and decisions, and discerning intelligence information, that God would guard and guide them at home and on the front lines, and that they would be filled with courage, not fear, knowing that God is near. And finally, a lot of, um, a lot of information out there on the media, what's good, what's bad, what's fake, what's real. But we need to pray for them. We need to pray for all sorts of media. I'm going to highlight the box so we know what we're talking about. There we go. And so we ask that all of those who work in Hollywood, New York, Atlanta, on every set, studio, and stage in between would know that Christ followers are praying for them. That Christ followers would not be another, just another critic in the lives who seek to tear them down, but that we would be able to speak truth with love that draws them near to God. That the truth and talent given by God and glorifying God will fill the screens, stages, scripts, stations, and songs of our nation. And finally, that the art, entertainment, and media would draw people closer to God as the first and consummate artist and the creator, and that they would give God glory for and with their talent. I like how it says that. Use every gift that they have for God. I'm not sure that the media that's uh, out there right now uh, is necessarily doing that all the time. So um, it's a good prayer to continue to ask God to be with them, uh, to be able to support them in what they're doing, but that they would be uh, honestly asking questions of folks who are in charge and that they would be uh, actually sharing the news and not just sharing the latest, uh, the, the latest hate-filled arguments for or against somebody in our government, whether it be state, local, national, uh, whatever level. Because um, I've talked many times in these devotions about how it just hurts my heart um, that we're focusing on things that aren't important in the moment, the things we need to work on right now, or just you know, getting through this, getting through it together, and uh, and praying for each other. And that's probably the most important prayer that we can pray right now, 
is that we pray that just everybody would band together, get through this as a country, as a globe, um, and that we can uh, do all sorts of fighting afterwards. We don't have to do our fighting right now in the midst of it. Um, I think that's a good place to end. Um, it's a beautiful day sitting outside. It's not as warm as it has been, but uh, it's still wonderful to be able to be outside. I'm hope hopeful that uh, all of you who are watching are, are able to go outdoors, even if it's just on your balcony. Um, but I, I just hope that you're able to uh, feel God's um, word through you, through these messages, through the YouTube videos, through the, the Christian literature that you maybe have in your hand, your portals of prayer, your daily bread, um, and that we will continue doing these devotions. Again, I need feedback on an idea for Bible studies. I've had a couple of ideas myself. Uh, again, the format of the Bible studies, I don't know until I, I hear back from some of you on how many of you would want to be involved. Our Thursday night uh, Bible study does continue. Barb Khan is leading that, of course. If you want to get involved in that, they're doing the lectionary readings, the weekly readings uh, for each Sunday that we have readings. Uh, they're working through those readings and studying those. But if you want a, a different kind of a Bible study, well, that's what I'm interested in, just being able to do whatever I can do uh, to support you. Got a lot of other things that working on right now, plans to reopen when we're able to reopen. What is that going to look like? Pastor Neil and I have a lot of conversations along with our staff about uh, what it will be, uh, what it will look like. Um, we have a lot, a lot more questions right now than we have answers. So hopefully in the next uh, next few weeks, we'll be getting some some final answers down as to what our opening back up will look like. Because we miss you all terribly. Um, we miss having an active, active church where people are in and out. And um, even when they're coming in for not such positive things, we just value that feedback uh, with our parishioners. And we value the feedback by email, phone, text, uh, whatever the case may be. You can reach me in a lot of different ways. I'd love to hear from you, hear how you're faring and how we can assist you. There's lots of people out there, like I said, that are willing to, to help with a lot of different things in a lot of different ways. If you're making face masks, as just as one example, I've got some people that uh, have some extra fabric sheets and pillowcases that uh, uh, they'd be willing to donate to be able to make face masks. So uh, lots of different things from the smallest to the largest. And uh, we hope to have you all back with us real soon that we can see you face to face, maybe not giving you hugs, Maybe not a handshake right away, but to be able to see you and smile at you and have that personal connection. So again, I hope you enjoy your day and God bless you.